Hello all, welcome to the web application pen testing course on Pentester Academy. In this video, we will look at HTTP statelessness and cookies. Now many of you may have heard that HTTP is a stateless protocol. So what is really meant by this? Well, what this really means is that every single request you make uh, over HTTP is actually treated independently. Now, what do I mean by that? The server does not retain any state for the clients. Now, let me give you a simple analogy. Uh, let's say that every morning we bump into each other in the park, right? And you basically say, hey, Vivek, I'm John. Good to meet you. Right. So the first time that happens, the next morning you meet me, you bump into me, you would expect that I would go ahead and recognize you and you would not have to say, hey, Vivek, I'm John. Right. Uh, unfortunately, in the case of HTTP, a HTTP web server basically will not remember you the next time you come to it, which means you would all over have to introduce yourself again, right? I don't know the movie, uh, I don't remember the movie name, but I think it was Memento or something like that, where the person pretty much, you know, forgets what happened in the last uh, 24 or 48 hours, maybe. So that's typically the web server for you, uh, you know, and the web server pretty much doesn't remember you across requests. Now, this seems to be a super difficult problem, right? If you think about it, because what this would mean is that every single request needs to be self-sufficient enough from an authentication perspective and authorization perspective, right? Which means it must carry enough information that either the server or the web application can authenticate it. Now, how is this accomplished? Or rather, how is statefulness put in? Uh, there are many, many other ways, but one of the ways which, which uh, you know, we can add statefulness is the use of cookies. However, cookies themselves have multiple uses, including both session management as well as storing user preferences. Now, what is a cookie? Very simply put, a uh, cookie is a mechanism which actually allows the web server to store and retrieve small amounts of data from the client, which in the typical case is your web browser, right? Now, where is this information stored? It's stored in a file on the client side, on the browser side, in one of the browser's temporary directories. Now, the most important thing here is really cookie is nothing but just plain text. There is no executable code in it, right? Uh, the analogy I can give you is this is like basically an ID card, you know, which you need to carry every single time uh, when you want to enter a premises, right? If you have that ID card, uh, the guard allows you in. If you don't, he doesn't, right? So cookie, can go ahead and play the role of the ID card to identify itself to the web server and web application in a unique way, depending on the actual implementation and architecture of it. Now, the most important thing is the size of individual cookie files cannot exceed 4K, right? This is a hard limit. Now, the question arises now, how does the cookie really look like? What is stored in it and all of that? So let's jump right into the demo. I have my Kali machine in here. And I have the browser running. Let's go to tools. Sorry, let's go to edit preferences. And We actually go down to privacy and in privacy, you actually see that they basically right here, you may want to clear your recent history or remove individual cookies, right? So let's say uh, we go ahead and first clear every single thing, right? So 
Clear history includes clear cookies and a bunch of other stuff. Let's clear everything. Close this. And now, let me actually visit the site yahoo.com. Okay. Let me go ahead, click on preferences. And let me click remove individual cookies. Right? And let me type in yahoo.com and if you notice we can see a bunch of cookies which seem to match our criteria now if you select any one of these cookies uh, you would actually find that the cookie uniquely has the name the content or the value the domain for which it is valid the path and a couple of other things including the expiration date etc right so this is really how individual name value pairs in the cookie look like i'll come to what each of these fields mean and you know uh, how they're important to us a little later but this is how you can look at any given cookie which is there in your web browser's cache now the second question arises how is a cookie really sent by the server uh, and you know what does the client really do with it apart from storing it locally so to answer this, let's again kind of go back in here. Let me remove all cookies, which I've done. Close, close. I've also opened up Wireshark. Let me start sniffing on each zero. And let me this time, let's say, go to CNN.com. site is opening and we see a ton of traffic in here let me type in http now this shows us a lot of http traffic now when the browser wants to set a cookie uh, on the client then the http header used is called set hyphen cookie okay so if you want to go ahead and filter by all requests which have the set cookie field this is where it is set hyphen cookie then we add a filter called http dot set underscore cookie so I go back in here dot set underscore cookie and there you go now each of these requests basically has a set hyphen cookie field in it right you can kind of move around and you would actually see uh, that there can also be multiple set hyphen cookies which are there right this is absolutely allowed you can have multiple name value pairs which you want to set now once the client receives this depending on whether it's a session cookie uh, or you know whether it is supposed to be stored for a longer time the client would go ahead and decide to put it in a temporary cache situation or probably in a little bit more longer situation depending on the expiry date. We'll discuss that in just a bit. However, the most important thing is now every single time the client makes a request back to the server, it would actually include the cookie. And this is done using again the cookie header tag and the cookie is mentioned right so really what am I getting to cookies are a very simple way by which the web server can store some form of stateful information on the client it does so by sending a new header called set hyphen cookie in which the name value and other attributes of the cookie are mentioned and then Every single time the client makes a request, the cookie is included. Uh, we'll see later there are other important aspects such as the path, the domain and all of that, which dictate when a specific cookie is actually sent back to the server, back to the client. Uh, but very simply put, the cookie is sent back every single time the client wants to communicate with the server, right? Now let's try and understand the individual attributes of the cookie
now just as we saw the server sent a set hyphen cookie header field and the client sent a cookie field right how are these two correlated now the server tells the client set the cookie here is the name equals value pair and you can have multiple of them uh, separated by colons and after that you have other attributes now when the client wants to send back the cookie it only sends back the name value pairs it does not send back the other attributes right the other attributes are really for the client uh, to decide whether or not to send the cookie or not to expire it you know whether it, it's supposed to send it over over HTTPS and all of that right so uh, examples of name value pairs now typically you can have something like session ID equals you know a very long random value uh, you can even have multiple name value pairs such as name equals Vivek colon age equals 12 country equals India so on and so forth so really I mean pretty much uh, you could put in any name value pair which is allowed and uh, as far as selecting the name is concerned again you know I've mentioned session ID but uh, there's no hard and fast, you know, kind of set through which you have to pick up the names, right? You can pretty much use any name. Now coming to the attributes, one of the most important attributes of a cookie is the expires attribute. Now expires is really when the browser should go ahead and delete and expunge the cookie from its cache, right? Now there is a very important point here. If a set cookie does not have expires, what that means is it is a session cookie. Now this instructs the browser to remove the cookie as soon as the user closes the browser. Only if the expires field is mentioned is the cookie retained across browser restarts. Right? Very, very important. Now assuming the expires field is there, the format is super simple format is day comma you know the actual day in the month date in the month followed by the month the year and then hours minutes and seconds all in GMT let me show you how this looks like uh, let's actually go to the cookie and oops set underscore cookie and I've selected one of these. If you notice, set cookie basically has UG1 equals some long random value. Then it says path, we come to what that is later, domain, finally expires. Expires equals Sunday, 23rd September, right? Uh, hyphen 18, so that is really very far away. 0958.40, right? Awesome. And you can pick up other requests as well. And you would notice that some cookies may not have the expiry date. These are session cookies. It's very important to keep that in mind. Right? Fantastic. Let's go back. Now, some of the more uh, recent implementations of cookies in RFC 6265 also include a max hyphen age parameter so rather than giving a date and time on which this expires max hyphen age basically gives the interval in seconds after which the cookie should be expired so as soon as the browser receives the cookie basically the timer starts based on the number of seconds based uh, written in the max hyphen age parameter domain this is really the domain or subdomain for which the cookie is valid and should be used such as you know docs.securitytube.net, .images.securitytube.net and when you say .images which pretty much means you know any subdomain uh, based out of images.securitytube.net uh, the cookie would be valid for that. Similarly you have path uh, where you know path can dictate uh, when certain cookies should be sent and when certain shouldn't. So for example, you can set the path to be the root or slash blog or pretty much any other valid path within your application. 
and I think we can see examples of this here as well uh, when we went ahead and picked this up so in this set cookie you actually have path equals you basically the root folder secure now this is important what this means is this cookie should only be sent over an HTTPS connection which means if for whatever reason the client talks to the server over HTTP then this cookie will not be sent over that connection right this is just to ensure transport layer protection finally HTTP only right this is important uh, later on we will talk about an attack called XSS or cross-site scripting. Uh, HTTP only cookies do not allow client-side scripts such as JavaScripts to be able to go ahead and uh, pick up the cookie from the browser and do things with it. Right? So that's all I have for the introduction to cookies. In the next video we will do an interesting lab with cookies. So before I finish, uh, I would really like to request that if you like all of these videos on Pentester Academy, please do recommend to your friends and colleagues, uh, you know, at work or you know, people who you may know in the InfoSec community. We are really trying to make InfoSec education affordable for everyone. And I really need your help in this. And you can connect to us on either Twitter or Facebook. On Twitter, we are Security Tube. Uh, you can also search for again security tube on Facebook and uh, yeah you can always give us feedback write us interesting comments or even solutions to any of the lab exercises you're doing and we'll retweet and respond to you that's all for this video thank you